Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're going to talk about erectile dysfunction. As a general internal medicine doctor, otherwise known as a PCP or primary care physician, I get asked about and treat erectile dysfunction or ED quite a bit. I often know when a male patient wants to talk to me about treatment for ED because they often wait until my hand is on the door as I'm exiting the room to speak up about it. So I often just simply ask patients proactively about it during their annual exams. Erectile dysfunction is defined as the consistent or recurrent inability to acquire or sustain an erection of sufficient rigidity and duration for sexual intercourse. A penile erection involves interactions between many systems within the body, including the circulatory system, nerves, hormones, and psychological systems. And when men are having difficulty with an erection, the problem can lie in any or several of these systems. Let's address each system separately and discuss what problems can occur. Let's start with the circulatory system. Normal erections require normal blood flow into the penis and normal dilation or relaxation of certain areas of the penis to allow for increased blood flow. When one of these systems does not work well, either the blood flow to the penis is inhibited or the relaxation mechanism doesn't work well, erections will not be adequate for sexual activity. Did you know that ED can be an early warning sign for cardiovascular disease? This means that you may be at greater risk for things like heart attacks and strokes. This would make sense because if the penis has difficulty with blood flow to certain areas, the heart or brain also may be having difficulty receiving blood normally. So naturally, since chronic conditions such as diabetes and chronic kidney disease increase someone's risk for cardiovascular disease, these conditions are also associated with a risk for ED. Basically, anything that's bad for your heart is also bad for your penis. So high blood pressure, smoking, elevated cholesterol, and obesity also have a higher risk for ED. And conversely, exercise is associated with a lower risk for ED. The next system involved is the neurological system, or the nerves. When a man has sensual visual input, nerves send signals to the spinal cord located between the T11 and L2. Another type of erection can occur with touch to the genital area, which sends signals to the sacral spinal area. From there, impulses travel to the pelvis, which then instructs increased blood flow to the penis. So if a man has had a lower spinal cord injury or stroke, these nerve impulses will be inhibited and erections won't occur. Furthermore, if a man has had damage to their pelvis from either an accident, prostate surgery, or radiation treatment, this can also inhibit or damage the nervous system and nerve signals will be damaged. Usually this type of erectile dysfunction develops suddenly. There's a marked decrease in inability to maintain an erection after an event occurs. Next is the role of hormones and testosterone plays the largest part. If a man has low testosterone, his libido or desire for sex will be diminished. Also, testosterone is a hormone necessary to help relax certain areas of the penis so blood flow can increase to those areas. And next is the role of psychology. Things such as depression, stress, and problems within a relationship can all contribute to ED. An ED that develops very suddenly often has an emotional source which can be helped with counseling. It's important for your doctor to understand whether the issue is stemming from low libido or a lessened desire for sex, or whether the desire is there, but they can't maintain an erection. The treatments are different. And I would also add that the rise in pornography use can lead to an increase in erectile dysfunction. If greater and greater visual stimulation is needed to evoke arousal, then physical sex with a human partner just isn't as stimulating. And lastly, it's estimated that up to 25% of men's erectile dysfunction may be caused by the medications they're taking. Some of these medications include antidepressants, especially the SSRIs, and common blood pressure medications such as thiazide diuretics, such as chlorothaladone or hydrochlorothiazide. Also, alcohol use, especially heavy alcohol use, and recreational drugs are also associated with erectile dysfunction. I'm going to continue this series and tell you more about other aspects of erectile dysfunction in parts two and three of my series. The next part in the series will be about the evaluation surrounding erectile dysfunction. 
And lastly, the series will end with how to treat erectile dysfunction. Thanks for joining me.